Uh, Jasmina Aganovic, uh, super awesome to have you on, on the Amber Night and the Amber Night podcast. Thanks for having me. So uh, you are president at uh, Mother Dirt. Yes. So tell me a bit about what you do. Sure, sure. Mother Dirt is the consumer facing side of AO Biome. Uh, AO Biome is a biotechnology company based in Boston and we are a skin microbiome company. Uh, specifically right now, we are focusing on a type of bacteria called ammonia oxidizing bacteria that once existed on our skin, but has been wiped out in the last few decades with modern hygiene. So we are uh, selling uh, AOBs uh, through our product line and also biome friendly products through Mother Dirt. But what we're also doing is we're doing clinical research on the implications of reintroducing this bacteria to the skin microbiome. Exciting. So, yeah. so what's the role of the the, the micro uh, the microbiome, the skin, or, or the or the microbe uh, makeup of our skin? Um, what is the role in health and in, in, in uh, health and well-being essentially? Sure. Like, what are we losing now that we have been disconnected from this from this? So there are a lot of parallels to things that we're already very familiar with. So the gut microbiome, there's lots of discussion about that. Um, we know that an imbalance in the gut microbiome happens through the types of foods that we eat, um, the preserved foods, the processed foods. It causes an imbalance, which can lead to a bunch of other problems, um, problems with digestion, problems with energy levels. And there are very similar parallels to the skin. So all of the products that we use on a regular basis also contribute to an imbalance on the skin. We've also become increasingly obsessed with sterilization. We've confused clean with sterile. We believe that bacteria on the skin is a bad thing. And so we've tried to get rid of it. But really what we're doing is we're destabilizing that ecosystem. And when we destabilize that ecosystem, we are potentially much more susceptible to a whole host of problems in the skin Unlike the gut, it's things that are also rooted in inflammation, but things like acne, eczema, rosacea. There's potentially a, a microbiome component to each of these. So how does uh, your product restore this, this balance? So I'll start by talking about the role of ammonia oxidizing bacteria and why we believe that it's really crucial. Uh, this bacteria is found everywhere in nature. Everywhere in nature where you have a nitrogen cycle happening, you will find this bacteria because it's such a crucial part of part of that cycle. Without this bacteria, the cycle doesn't complete. And the only example on earth where we don't find this bacteria where there is a nitrogen cycle happening is modern human skin. Right. So we have the beginnings of a nitrogen cycle and no completion of a nitrogen cycle. Uh, so that's a very interesting piece of information for us. So one of the big pieces that we look at in terms of the importance of this bacteria to the skin microbiome is what allowing a nitrogen cycle to complete could mean. And what we're starting to learn is that it is rebalancing the skin's ecosystem. Uh, this importance of restoring this nitrogen cycle by restoring AOBs to the skin results in a more stable ecosystem. Um, it's a peacekeeper, keystone species for that reason, and we see big changes in the overall ecosystem of the skin as a result of this one microorganism. Exciting. How did you uh, first get involved uh, through, uh, in, 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 in the venture and in, in, the, in the company? Sure, I've been with the company for just about two years now. Uh, when I joined, there was, there was no mother dirt. Uh, we were just focused on uh, clinical uh, research. Uh, in fact, we were focusing on, on wound healing at the time. I see. Which, which universities were, were involved? Sure. MIT is MIT. the primary university. So right. several people on the team are from MIT. Uh, I myself graduated from MIT. My background is in chemical and biological engineering. So we have several chemical engineers uh, on the team. Um, and uh, as we started to understand how easily influenced this bacteria was by many of the products and the lifestyle and hygiene choices that people make, we started exploring this realm of consumer products a little bit more. We were lucky and had an article written about our research in the New York Times. And uh, New York Times is a big deal. We thought that the article would get some interest, but we ended up getting such a tremendous amount of interest. We got thousands and thousands of emails from people saying, this is a really interesting idea. This is much needed. This makes so much sense. Can I try your product? Can I participate in your studies? And that was around the time that I was talking to the company uh, and they were interested in building a consumer facing side for the, for the sake of triggering this conversation of what is clean and what does it mean to have healthy skin. Um, and so I joined shortly thereafter and my mandate was to build a consumer brand around the technology and that's ultimately what became Mother Dirt. Awesome. Yeah. So, so what are the fundamentals of skin health if we, if we talk more broadly than, than just from the scope of, of a restoring it through, through, for example, your products? 
Sure. Well, it's changing. So for a very long time, skin health was defined by you know what skin cells were like and what the lipid barrier was like and what thickness was like and what collagen and elastin was like. Those were many of the parameters that defined skin health. And what we are trying to do as a company, as a skin microbiome company, is to introduce the microbiome as a criteria for skin health. Um, what does a healthy microbiome look like on the skin? We don't know. Right. Just like in the gut. Exactly. Uh, one day we hope to, <laughs> um, but uh, we don't. We don't know quite yet. There are some patterns that may or may not be uh, emerging with certain disease states, but it's very, very, very early to say. Okay. Is that something that uh, people could figure out on their own, or or do some types of uh, uh, of uh, say tests in their diet, in their daily practice uh, of of using, uh, for example, cosmetics? Sure. Is there, something, is there something concrete that uh, our listeners could, could, for example, take into account uh, when they're trying to tackle some of the issues that they may have uh, with, their, with their skin, for example? Sure. So I think less is more is a, is a great place to start. So using Mother Dirt products or not using Mother Dirt products, I think really evaluating the types of products that you're using and why you're using them is, is important. Uh, we've been so trained to think that more is more is more and that we need to use these things, that we need these, these um, routines. Showering is a great one. Many people have gotten accustomed to lathering up every inch of their body when in reality not every inch of your body really gets that dirty. Right. Um, so using soap selectively is a great one. Um, seeing how often you actually really need to wash your hair. Um, so there are these things that are ingrained in us that aren't truly necessary. Um, children, I think, are a really important one to talk about as well. Um, the statistics that we see are astounding. Pediatric eczema is growing tremendously. One in six children today have it, and parents today are raising children with skin issues that they never saw growing up. Hmm. Um, but if you look at what we've been trained now as a com community to do is, the, is bathe our children every single night with lathery, soapy water. Yeah. But the, the child typically, unfortunately, today goes from home to car to school to car to home they don't really get dirty, and yet still we clean them every single day with you know these these soaps. So really reevaluating when do you actually get dirty? When do you actually need to lather up completely? It seems like we've kind of dressed up lathering up as a as a way of showing our care and love right. for our children. Right. We're we're actually taking something very vital and something very primal away from them. Yes. Our co-founder, Jamie Haywood, um, in many of his presentations, he starts off with a, a photo of a baby in a, in a bathtub and there's all this soapy water around the baby. And you look at this photo and it's very serene and peaceful and there's this nurturing element to it. And Jamie always describes how, you know, 10 years ago, if you had shown him this photo or he would have said, you know, I, I think that I'm doing the best things for my kids because he has three children Nurturing, and this is what yeah. he was, yeah. But now he says, I would never do that with my kids because ultimately lathering them up that much, that constantly, you are removing something from them that's really important. And particularly in the first two years, the, the microbiome is in really heavy development during that time. What are your views on using coconut oil as a as a means of skincare? Uh, we can see definitely in sure. not only in the in the biohacking community but in the health community in general. Yeah. Coconut oil being on such a sharp growth trajectory and basically as a right. cure all for basically whatever. So many like things. every other week there's a new finding that people are using coconut oil for this and for that. So what's right. your view on on, on, on this, on, on skincare? Well, interesting you should ask. We um, have a biome friendly testing platform, so we test. Um, raw materials and ingredients and also formulations for their friendliness and their effect on the skin ecosystem. And this is something that we started doing because uh, people that started using the mist, they became so much more aware of their ecosystem. They were starting to see the benefits of a balanced ecosystem. And so they wanted to know what other products they could use. And the vast majority of products that sit on a shelf contain a preservative, which inherently inhibits bacterial growth. Um, so we realized that we needed to create our own, which is what we started doing. But as right. part of that, we needed to test raw materials and ingredients. And coconut oil is actually one of the ones that is biome friendly. So when people ask us for moisturizer recommendations, coconut oil is one of the first ones that we recommend because we know that it won't have an adverse effect on the skin's ecosystem. Do the uh, capric or the caprylic acids uh, play a part in that? Or what, what makes coconut oil so good for your skin? The way that we measure that is through toxicity for the bacteria. So that's our metric. When we say biome friendly, we use our very fragile organism as a test for that. So we know that if our organism it doesn't die, doesn't tear its membranes, is able to recover properly and thrive, um, then we know that it's going to be biome friendly. So what okay. part of coconut oil truly makes it 
I, I, I don't know. We don't yeah. know. I yet. guess the jury is still out on that one. I mean, like, it, it's not even fully understood. Sure. One day we will understand why certain ingredients end up being toxic or not toxic. With surfactants are easier for us. Certain surfactants just have such a strong um, pull in terms of polarity, and they just tear the membranes apart for the bacteria. Um, so surfactants, when they fail, we we know why. But things like coconut oil was surprising for us because there is an antibacterial component to coconut oil. Exactly. And yet, uh, and it's, yet it's, that it's kind of affect it's, our it is surprising, yeah. especially from that from that point of view. Right. 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 So. So is there something that uh, that really inspires you right now in the in the health movement and and, and in the uh, in the uh, scene that we we're both seeing here, for example, in, in in London right now in this event? Yeah. Well, what I always feel when I go to events like this is that there's such a push towards progress and there's such a push towards making, enhancing lives, um, enhancing quality of life, really understanding how we can improve the human condition. And that I think is, is wonderful. Um, I've always really enjoyed that. Um, we're in personal care, so I, sometimes it feels like a little bit like a fish out of water here because um, there's so many different things that are being talked about and personal care isn't often one of them, but goes hand in hand with the lifestyle. It totally does. Yeah. Um, but still, regardless, lots of overlapping themes here um, that, that always make me very excited. Awesome. So do you have a, a final idea or point or tip for our listeners uh, that they could maybe apply uh, even even tonight before they before they uh, do their, their typical routine go yeah. to the shower and uh, take care of take care of their skin yeah I think using soap selectively just see what happens just lather up on certain specific areas also try using less of your deodorant if you're using any perspirant I have entirely other pieces of advice but if you're using a deodorant see if you can cut back or cut down on that deodorant. Um, those would be some basic ones I would start with. Awesome. And yeah. uh, uh, is there is there a way for uh, people to get in touch with you or find um, more information about your products? Absolutely. They can go to motherdirt.com, so that includes all of the information about our products. If they're interested in learning about the clinical side of what we do, that's aobiome.com. Awesome. Just Mina, it's been a it's been a pleasure. Thanks so much. Uh, it was so awesome to have you here, and uh, let's uh, continue the biohacking show. Absolutely, and likewise. Thanks for having us. Thank you. <laughs>